today I am taking a break from working on characters because uh, I noticed that all these vlogs have just been drawing characters and talking about character design so I decided to give scenery drawing a shot. A part of it is like I wanted a break. I've been drawing a lot of characters recently and doing lots of like corrections for the magpie so I just wanted a little change of pace to freshen things up and dive into something else and probably talk about something new because I feel like I've said same thing a lot about character design which is good I guess because a lot of people have said that they just like listening to these while they draw um so it's just like nice background noise so like I'm glad for that but uh, yeah I want to just talk about something something fresh <laughs> In the past, I haven't done much planning when it comes to drawing uh, scenery or backgrounds or environments. Um, it's usually something that happens while I'm doing the pencils of a new page, which is a very bad habit <laughs> because it leads to lots of rooms that are just white space or backgrounds that are shifting around and don't make sense or like you know a bedroom that doesn't look like the character actually lives there in their bedroom and if it's like an outdoor scene like in the woods or something it's like you can't tell where they are there's no sense of like different points in <laughs> in 3D space like it just looks like random trees in the background or something um so yeah so I really wanted to push myself to improve the way I do my backgrounds um so I decided that it would be a great idea so similar to how with my character designs I've been doing a lot of really quick initial designs and eventually I'm gonna take all the characters and like line them up to make sure that they all align together I'm gonna do that with backgrounds so I decided to begin with really rough like thumbnail sketches of different scenes and pieces of scenery and get like I usually start with a bird's eye view layout because I find that it's easier to process like the entire space that way instead of having to worry about like the perspective on things or how things look in 3D space. It can just be like I'll draw some circles and squares and X's and say like here's a table, here's a chair, here's a tree, um, here's where the characters will be standing. Um, so blocking things in really gesturally I guess <laughs> to make sure that I just think about how things are laid out and so make sure that they make sense. It's it's very helpful. It's also a tool that I've heard many times that will help when you're learning perspective. Um, so basically you can draw like um, you can do what I'm doing and do like a little thumbnail sketch of how you want the room to look and then you can take it in like Photoshop or Clip Studio or whatever um, art software you're using and you can skew it so that it is in perspective um, so then you basically turn that into like the floor and then you can just draw up from what you've you've drawn so like if you've drawn a bunch of squares you can just like extrapolate from there and like you know draw the vertical corners up from there and then put it all in perspective like it's a good starting point because um, it lays everything out and then you kind of see where things fall after they've been skewed if that makes sense. <laughs> Instead of having to guess like the distance between objects when you are putting things into perspective immediately. At least I find that's that's really what has helped me. I've heard it a couple different places like I think I learned it from a tutorial somewhere. So yeah give that a try if you're ever struggling with perspective or laying out a room just do a little thumbnail sketch to figure things out. In this drawing session I did I found the outdoor scenes to be a lot harder like the cityscape scenes like I think somewhere in here I'm drawing like the the capital which is where all the 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 cat citizens the, the kittizens live um so I was trying to draw kind of like the city around the castle <laughs> oh my god these puns okay um so I was trying to draw the city around the castle because it's like an important set piece but like oh my god it's so difficult like I really struggle with cityscapes and laying out the relationships between houses and streets and I think I really need to study that more because I noticed like I was trying to draw things and I was like this doesn't really make sense like I can get an idea of how things look like from above like in general like here's the castle and then here's like the buildings 
spraying out from it, but eh, I don't know where everything goes, and cities are full of detail and people and, like, buildings and stuff, so yeah, I really need to get some references for it before I tackle it again. Whereas I found with some of the smaller scenes, like, I did a few interiors of, like, um, dining rooms and uh, bedrooms and stuff, I found those a lot easier because it's a very confined space and I know kind of what furniture I want there to be and where the characters will be placed. Whereas with the cityscape, it's very like, it feels a lot more nebulous to me and it's very hard to picture in my head. <laughs> Whereas a room, it's very like, you know, I can, I can look at um, interior design and think about like, it's a lot easier to picture in my head. <laughs> And a lot simpler to design because, like, you know, furniture is very, like, um, geometric and, uh, whereas, like, a city street, I guess they are pretty geometric. Like, buildings and stuff are definitely geometric. <laughs> but, yeah, just because I know, like, with, when you're looking down, like, a city street, there's always a bunch of things happening. There's, like, um, people and different buildings that are at different angles or different heights because they were built at different times. You know, there's things going on, like, since this is, like, a medieval setting, it'd probably be, like, market stuff going on, like, people selling wares and, uh, you know, people walking around and, um, you know, knights patrolling the, the streets, stuff like that. So, like, and I honestly need to, like, research about what would be present on, like, the streets in medieval times, because it's like, are there, like, you know, horses or elk walking around? Like, in Nine Point, there's no horses, they use elk, so if I say elk, I'm, I'm basically talking about horses. <laughs> so yeah, so, like, are there horses around? Do they have drawn carriages? Like, what's going on? So I really need to, like, sit down and really think that one out and probably discuss it with Bones quite a bit to figure out what he's picturing. So yeah, that one's difficult. And then there are a few scenes here that I was drawing, not scenes, um, uh, set pieces, settings, um, that I was drawing where it's like a little trail in the woods or a clearing in the woods, which are very easy to draw because it's like, okay, here are the important pieces. Like there's this tree that characters might climb, um, or there's like a fire pit and a sign or something. Um, so it's very easy to like picture how that's laid out where the city is definitely like, ah, what, what is happening? Too much. Eee. <laughs> So yeah, this, this drawing session has definitely been a bit more challenging. I did run through a whole bunch of thumbnails of different scenes. Uh, I keep saying scenes. Uh, of different settings. Um, I did a lot of little quick sketches. Again, I want to see them all side by side later so I can really figure out like is this how I want this to look? If it's in, like, if it's two rooms in the same location, so, like, two rooms in a house or two rooms in the castle, like, do they look cohesive? Does it make sense that this room would be here? And where does this room go? Setting, there's a lot to think about. <laughs> I definitely take it for granted when I am just drawing it on the fly, like I usually do, where it's like, well, we need to have a, a scene happen in a bedroom, so I'll draw a bedroom. Like, I definitely take for granted, like, the position of rooms in houses, and it's like, okay, if there's a window here, that means that this is, like, an outward-facing wall, and then if you have a room beside it that the characters go into, like, where's the outward facing wall there or is it facing like inside the house like there's lots of stuff that you have to think about um i find it sometimes helpful when i'm say drawing like a house the characters live in where they will be in multiple different rooms um it's really important to do like a really quick outline of what the house looks like to just say like okay this is where this room is this is where the windows are and the doors this is this room blah 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 just so that I don't create impossible space, though I'm sure I have in the past. <laughs> and I'm really nervous to do that for the Nine Point Catzel because it's a really big space and I'm sure I won't have to do the layout for the entire thing. However, it would be a really good idea to mock up just the... the, the, the 
important rooms and general layouts, even if it's just like, here is the wing where the knights hang out. This is the wing where the royal family hangs out. Um, this is the... I don't know. <laughs> um, here are hallways. Here's where these rooms connect. Um, and I guess I just have to watch out for like, what important stuff appears in the script. Like, um, I think in the script currently there's like a dining room setting and a few bedroom settings and some hallway settings in the castle, possibly. So yeah, I need to definitely mock those up and figure out where they are in relationship to each other. The thing is with the castle, it's like, it's at least nine stories tall and it's probably way more. Nine stories tall, it's way more than that probably. <laughs> but basically, the knights that live there, um, there's like... There's nine different points that the knights can have, um, and they they go according with like the, the fur color types of different pointed cats, um, but each of them have a courtyard in the castle, and I've already designed a couple of the cor courtyards, uh, and they're all kind of like stacked, like they're, like they're vertical, they're not like all on the same level. Um, so like it's just, the castle is basically a big tower. <laughs> I hope I'm describing this okay because I don't have any drawings of it here in this video, but it's basically a big tower and like as you go up you go to different like um, I guess wings that the the different knight knights live in and so like each of them gets their own courtyard and then somewhere up top maybe is like where the royal family hangs out and then there must be a place for like where the court takes place and like do nobles live there? I gotta figure this out. <laughs> See, there's like a lot that goes into it. And I really have to think about where it all happens. Like, even just like a really general sketch of like, okay, here's the royal family, here's the different knights, blah -de blah It's really good to get that down so that I don't confuse myself later, because I'm sure I will. <laughs> that reminds me, I should probably confer with Bones to make sure that I'm not mismatching things so that his script doesn't make sense later. That's the thing, plan as much as you can when you are doing the prep work for your comic because it'll save you a lot of hassle later. Because if you basically draw yourself into a corner where you're like, oh shoot, I drew the castle so that it doesn't have a rooftop garden, but I want my final scene to happen at a rooftop garden, like you're screwed. <laughs> I'm also really excited to have lots of stuff prepped for for Nine Point. Um, like I'm excited to have the characters have very different like um, settings that are all their own. Like say, so there's Penny and Marble. So Marble's the main character. Penny's his mom. They live in like a little treehouse together. It's like I want them to be cute and have like this little space that they've created together where like Marble will have his bedroom and I want it to be styled in a way that he would style it and I want Penny to style her bedroom in a way that she would style it and like I'm not even sure if all these locations are going to be shown but I think it's really important to understand like why does this character decorate their space this way because like if I look at say like the castle it'll be very like traditional like I'm sure the royal family and the knights have some say on like the decor but it's a lot of like you know old heirlooms and traditions that have been passed down and like you know the different emblems of the knights are gonna be everywhere and like the royal family's emblem will be everywhere um and it'll all be very like majestic and beautiful and then there's like you know, the little house that Penny and Marble live in, where they have a lot of sway over what goes in there. You know, is Marble's room messy? Does he keep it clean? What does he decorate with? Does he decorate at all? Because that can say a lot about your character. Um, if they have, you know, if they collect stuffed animals, that says something about them. If they decide to have, like, a really tidy, stylish home, like, that says something, doesn't it? So I'm really excited to, like, actually put that into my settings and locations. And yeah, <laughs> basically plan, plan, plan everything and have a good time, uh, I hope. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely very... This, this exercise of doing, like, a whole bunch of thumbnails of different locations, it's been really nice to, like start seeing things in a really concrete way because I've imagined a lot of these settings like kind of in the peripheral of like the action of the script if that makes sense where it's like I kind of have a feel of what they look like from reading the script 
but I haven't like drawn anything really concretely. They're just kind of like smudges of color and like feeling. And now I have to put them down on paper. So it's very interesting to see them all kind of like side by side and see like, okay, so my mind is picturing this and making sure everything like makes sense as to where it's placed. And again, making sure that all these locations don't look exactly the same and that they're suitable to the character and the place. And yeah, <laughs> well, so much to think about, but very cool, very interesting. Um, so I did notice when I was drawing these that they're there's a lot of things that need to be reworked in my head. Like, um, like I said, definitely with the cityscape, a whole bunch of stuff needs to be reworked and thought about a lot more deeply than I had originally. But things like some of the bedrooms, it's like, okay, maybe I need to reconsider how this is laid out to make sure that it, um, I don't know, to make sure that it suits what happens in the scene. Because if, say, like, a character enters the room and then they need to go, like, sit here or move here, it's like, are they able to? Will it look weird? Will it go against what the script says? And, yeah. So it's very cool to see all that and so I can start reworking things and reconsidering things. And, yeah. Um, it's definitely important to put your, your thoughts down onto paper. Um, I think I said this before about character design, but basically everything looks cooler in your head. Um, and some things you'll you'll think work really well will not when you actually put them down on paper. You'll realize like, oh, this doesn't make sense at all. This is an impossible space. Or, or this goes against the script. Or, oh, that actually didn't look cool at all, which I run into all the time <laughs> um, in my own work. It's very important to test out your ideas really concretely because um, you might even discover a really cool new layout that you hadn't even thought of before. It's also really helpful, well obviously it's really helpful when you're working with a partner or um, other collaborators so you can show them like this is what I'm picturing. Um, like when I'm talking to Bones it's like does this align with what you were planning for this setting or this character? Um, so he's he's always super helpful with making sure things are aligned to his vision and the script. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm not looking super forward to fleshing these out a little bit. Because like I said, it's very easy to get lost in, like, figuring out perspective. Um, and that's what I'm not looking forward to, is like, okay, I have all these designs, now I have to put them into perspective and, like, really understand how they work on a 3D level so that I can place the characters into them. Admittedly... Oh, I don't actually know, but I'm hoping that'll come a little easier once I start, like, uh, drawing, like, uh, the actual comic pages. So that it's, like, um... Because it's definitely easier once you start placing characters into a space to understand how it works. Um, so I'm hoping if I have, like, a nice enough thumbnail sketch and then... Okay, I definitely need to flesh them out more. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta tell myself this. Yeah, so I need to flesh them out more. I need to check how they work in perspective, and then start placing characters in it before I start drawing the comic pages so that I'm not discovering problems right before things need to, uh, go out, <laughs> you know, before the final pages are being made. So, yeah. <laughs> Test all your stuff out, I guess. And, yeah. Yeah, I really need to do that. It's definitely very fun to dive into setting. It's a nice change of pace. And it's like, it's a different way of thinking. It's very weird because like the, the characters and like extras, like, like background characters in it definitely play a role in like how things, play a role in how things are gonna, gonna look. So that'll be, that'll be cool. It's, yeah, it's a lot of moving pieces to figure out. Um, so yeah. Alrighty, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions or if you'd like to request a video topic, please leave a comment down below. If you'd like to see more cool videos about webcomics and art and writing, please subscribe. We have many more videos to show you. Yeah, how, how, what do you guys do to plan your backgrounds? I'd love to know because I am still learning this stuff and I'm sure you guys have lots of awesome insights because you always do. So yeah, let me know your process. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!